So I have a soft spot for the Sega Master System. I think a woefully underrated system uh, that's not been really shown any love in recent years in terms of, you know, remakes, portables, minis, micros, all of that stuff. They really are underrepresented in the community. So I always have fascination for Sega Game Gear, of course, because you can play very similar games and indeed those exact Master System games with the appropriate adapter. The only problem is, as you will probably experience if you had one of these back in the day, um, that you can hardly see the screen. Believe it or not, the screen is actually on now. And if you hear the sound, you can prove it's working, but it's terrible. So imagine my surprise when I went on AliExpress and saw rather reasonably, so it's not always the case that they're reasonable, um, but rather reasonably found for £40 a Sega Game Gear screen replacement that apparently had everything you would need including let's check this out yes a pre-attached screen so no more of that worrying dust getting in there this screen apparently has been professionally attached so you can just obviously pop off the old one and replace this and i think this is a glass screen as well which uh, should give you some additional benefits whereas uh, you're gonna kind of miss out on that kind of dome look there but that's fine we've got a couple of these game gear so i can sacrifice one um, no instructions, so we'll have to go online. Let's have a look at the main board here. So it's got a big Xilinx FPGA and probably a couple of NAND flash memories. Let's twist it around the right way. Backlight clock, Game Gear SMS, button two, button one, button three. I'm guessing you can actually hook these up to some of the button controls so that if you hold down certain combinations, so you've got three buttons right here, you can probably hold down certain combinations to sort of change the screen power saving vcc so that's the voltage and very interestingly you do have an rgb out which would probably work on the vj monitor so you've got red green blue horizontal sync and vertically sync right there available so this is the fanny playing lcd convert board with brightness control all rights reserved now something else that looked interesting is this so normally, of course, you've got to solder these onto your main board, which I'm pretty sure we still have to. But what this thing does, this apparently saves you the effort because it's actually a pre-printed ribbon cable. I don't really know where it actually attaches. Let's see if we can figure this out. Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, OK. Maybe it's something to do with that. Well, I guess I'll figure it out in due course. Um, but the idea, of course, is that this can go then nicely into that PCB that's on the Game Gear and you can just solder down a few touch points. Uh, and then that's great. I don't know what this is. Look, this is so weird. There's so much stuff in here. I mean, this looks like some sort of just extension for this screen ribbon. Maybe the screen ribbon's not enough? So I really wish they would put some instructions in here. And of course, a tiny bit of Kynar-like wire. Anyway, I think I need to go to the internet first before we touch anything. I've got myself some printed instructions. So the first thing is just to take everything apart because you're going to have to get in there and apparently you've got to start removing some existing components from the actual PCB motherboard in there. And if you haven't got one, I suggest getting hold of one of these. It's the specialist screwdriver needed to undo this particular screw. And I do believe it's used in other consoles, maybe the Super Nintendo? I have a feeling I, I've bought this for more than one uh, application, but maybe I just bought it for this. Right, let's prise it open. There we go. I'm going to undo these connectors so that I can get the shell totally apart. can't quite remember where they're going. Are they actual connectors? <laughs> oh yeah, there you go, on that side. Definitely don't try to yank out the blue end. That would be bad news. So there is the sound board here, and this is the power supply board. I suspect those remain unmodified, but we'll learn about that later. But this is the main beast, and you can see you actually have here a cold cathode tube, like a fluorescent light tube in here. There's your cartridge slot. And there's a whole bunch of gubbins. You can see these are the capacitors I would have added uh, before just to get this thing working. And looking at the instructions here, uh, I'm going to get a poking device. It's saying that you need to remove 
R33, R34, R30, R32, R29, and those basically are dotted around here. And if you look closely, you will be able to see them written right there. I think I've got to get the old soldering iron warmed up. We can get cracking. So let's start looking for these. You might notice I'm not using a hot air blower because I don't actually have it with me at the moment. So we're going to be just using normal soldering iron techniques to remove stuff. And just to show you how I'm doing it, I'm applying plenty of solder. And if you've got flux, it'll work even better. You can just apply that, heat some of these pins. So for example, this transistor, I'm heating the single pin first because that's the one on its own. And then I can just about get the other two. And there you go, a little bit of jiggery pokery needed, but you will get it out. And then I did displace the capacitor that was next to that. So I'm just gonna pop that capacitor back home. This is very, me it's very messy looking because you're actually mixing old solder and new solder, but you know, don't worry about it too much. And you can see here, of course, there's two resistors right next to each other that we've got to get rid of. Again, they pop straight off. If you can get a soldering iron that's a little bit like this one that has this chisel tip, you can often get both sides of a surface mount component at once, like so. And then it just comes off. It's just stuck to the tip there. I shall work my way through. So now we come to L2, which is this big old inductor here. So rather than try to desolder it, I'm going to see if I can get in there and just snip the leg. So I'm going to get a double check that yes, we do need to get rid of this. So let's try to go in at an edge. And this PCB actually really smells <laughs> as the soldering iron is sort of heating it up. I'm guessing it's activating old chemicals on there that were leaking out of the electrolytics previously. So we've got to remove L2, we have to remove C33, which is this big old capacitor. Seems weird getting rid of capacitors, but that's fine. I have to get rid of quite a lot of components here. There's still a couple more resistors down this end we've got to tackle. Uh, the R44, again, yeah, let's have a go at R44. It's not too bad. And what's the other one? I can't. I can hardly read it on this. It's such a bad printout. Uh, R43. So there should be nine when you're done. So I'm going to go and count the little pile of resistors and see if I've got nine in there afterwards. So we can move on now to the screen a little bit. Now this is where it gets a little bit weird because there is actually some components under the screen as well. So I'm going to undo these screws that are holding that screen in. I'm saying screen a lot, aren't I? But I think I mean the illumination for the screen. It will be interesting to see the screen there, of course. So it is backlit. Let's not forget it. It's very badly backlit. I think, thinking about it, you know, the Game Boy which was around at the time, you know, clearly it had its limitations in its screen, but this was definitely worse. Because if you think about it, the Game Boy Advance didn't even have a backlight um, for ages. And in fact, I don't think it ever really had a backlight in Europe, and it had a front light added at some point. So this must have been terrible for backlighting technology. So we're gonna get this out there. So I guess be careful, don't, do this when this is on because this tube probably could be needing many hundreds of volts to operate. That's the reflector. Look at that. That's really amazingly shiny after all this time. Considering it's some sort of electroplated plastic, it's really survived well. So let's see if we can get this out. And of course, be careful of these. There could be mercury in it. Uh, and I suspect there probably is mercury in it. Just popping it off. There's one end. There must be a serious bit of kit because they've got two fuses that we're going to have to remove as well. And it's up to you. Again, you could just cut the leads and pop them out, but I'm going to try to solder them, desolder them from the top. That's the one. In fact, this one's not going to go nicely because <laughs> I can't even get to the solder tag. So let's just see if we can snip it neatly. Now we are replacing the whole screen. So you probably don't have to be too cautious about damaging anything there. 
but you really don't want to knack your PCB, so take the appropriate level of care. So I think the last thing is we've got a 32 megahertz clock is there. It seems to be indicated that they're getting rid of it, but I mean, I'm going to just study this properly just to make sure that that's the case. We seem to be good. I couldn't figure out what they, why they were indicating the crystal here, so I'm just ignoring that at the moment. But I can tell from the instructions that we will need to take this whole thing out so it's pretty much a good time to do that. Next steps. So it says remove the LCD, peel off the ribbon carefully like tape. So you've got all of this gubbins. Quite chunky, isn't it, really, the old screen there. Peel it off like tape. So here goes nothing. It feels... Whoa, hang on. It's taking the bloody pad with it. I'm not going to peel it off like bloody tape. I'm going to desolder it. That is hair raising to say the least. <laughs> Let's get some flux on here too. Um, that is a bit dodgy. I would definitely not recommend peeling it off like tape unless you want to lose some of these pads. Which admittedly you might not need, I don't know in this mod, but I think if they're there you want to try to keep them. Come on. Takes a bit of perseverance. Oh right, hang on. Hang on a minute. We have a actual bit of tape to get rid of, which is on this side first. And then we've got to apparently chop off some screw mount with pliers. There's a lot going on here. Now with this bit of tape removed, it should be a lot easier. <laughs> Let's try that now. Well, I wouldn't say it's a lot easier, but it's definitely okay. <laughs> You can see as they get heated up, the copper on the ribbon does yield. Yeah, it's coming along nicely. Again, you can see that chisel tip really coming into its own. I'm sliding it along underneath like a knife and it's melting that solder and lifting it at the same time. Very handy indeed. You can see even the pads, which I thought looked a bit damaged, actually weren't. It's uh, just some residue from here. Apparently we no longer need this mount. Yoinks! And away! I'm going to try to get it quite flush though, just in case that new screen has to touch right up to it. And it says here, next, now check the 5 volts with a voltmeter at VCC ground of the game gear. If the voltage exceeds 5.45 volts, repair your game gear. Otherwise, the game gear mod will be damaged. Well, I don't really know how you do that without plugging everything back in. And frankly, I'm a bit too lazy to do that. So I'm going to take my chances with that. Now, I did notice here... It does say on this bit of instructions, wire from T10 to T11. So it does appear that there should be some sort of test points here, which I don't see a T10 or a T11. So, hmm, not quite sure on that. I mean, there are differences I notice on this board. For example, they refer to the capacitor here as C32, but actually on this board it's C69. So I've got to be a bit, a bit cautious. 
Yeah, turns out I've got the instructions for the wrong version. This is called the 1 ASIC, and this is the 2 ASIC instructions. However, there is a 1 ASIC instruction, so I'm going to be maybe making a few little adjustments, but it does explain the absence of some of these jumper points. I think, though, studying the diagram so far, no irreversible damage has occurred in that I've only removed parts that are common for both. So that is at least a plus. According to the Mystic Runes, it's time to slide this into place. There wasn't really much, by the way, I had to alter based on our previous instructions. And I've just followed them along and just plodded along. There's nothing really too taxing, apart from maybe down here. There are a few resistors I did a little solder bridge on. But if you're doing it yourself, you can just replace. If you have a solder bridge, you do a bit of wire, and that'd be a lot simpler. So I believe that this board goes on top here. And there is some holes to align it. But interestingly, the hole down here doesn't quite align. So I'm a little bit nervous about that. But I think we'll just have to go with it, because these top holes here do. And then you just add a blob of solder. So I think you're just using solder to fix that. And I guess try your best in terms of the alignment. It, it certainly isn't perfect. It certainly doesn't want to align perfectly. But I guess that's as good as it gets. So it is a bit tricky. So I'm going to put a little bit more flux here and here. Just like so. And <laughs> I need an extra hand. I'm going to pop a bit of solder across that hole there to keep it locked into place. I'm going to put my soldering iron onto my extra mode, 350 degrees mode. So I'm going to get some heat on there. And actually, if I hold down the A button, I believe it gives me a little turbo boost indeed, up to 380. So I'm going to just turbo boost that just to get that solder that extra bit hot. I'm just going to come in with a blob more. Boom. And a little bit more. Right, now we're cooking. Nice. I am a little bit concerned, of course, though, that we do appear to be totally blocking screw holes. So that could be a bit of an issue in the future, but... I think we'll just have to continue and worry about it when we have to, or if we have to. It's really sizzling here. Whew. That is a lovely blob right there. Look at that. That's not going anywhere. I might even touch up this one to match. Now, I suppose also these holes are actually for affixing the a reflector there but they probably would add some support to this PCB but probably not too much of an issue because you do have these big screws going through at the bottom so I think it's probably going to be okay. Now that I'm done it's actually quite heavy duty it's a weighty feeling thing you've obviously just added a big chunk of PCB but four quite considerable <laughs> anchors of solder. So I'm going to put that down for now. Now there are uh, elements in the instructions that I'm not sure for example if you go up to this picture it shows an FB1 to here, so do we have to add a wire from FB1 to somewhere, or is that where we're supposed to measure a 32 megahertz signal? I don't know, we're just sort of ignoring that. But we're just racing ahead, really, in the instructions. And it just has particular steps, so it's like here. First, solder one wire of, to VCC of the GG mod to one wire ground, uh, and then leave the other ends. <laughs> okay, so I think I'm going to have to go offline and decipher this and just battle on through it. Hmm, that was a little bit tricky, but not too bad. The only bit, though, I'm a little bit disappointed on is the alignment. So you've got these bits of these ribbons, and they're supposed to align with particular pads here, but they don't really, so now I've got to kind of work out whether they need to be shimmied left or right here. I'm just hooking this up now. This is a really quite handy way to align those pins to get your little bit of Kynar aligned up nicely. And once it's all straight, you can hold that with your tweezers. And just apply a little bit of heat. Get it to sit down on that pin. And then with your snips, just get in there. Yoink. 
cut that excess bit off. And you can see I've got the Kynar, uh, sorry, Captan, Capstan, Capstan, Capton <laughs> tape. Uh, and then after I'm done with this, I'll probably just run a bit of tape over it just to make sure it's insulated. Keep going. That was a bit of a pain, but it's done now. So, just going to pop some tape there. Nicely protecting our hard work. Those of a sensitive disposition ought to look away now because indeed I am using my soldering iron tip as a hot blade. Again, another perfect use for that chisel tip, but make sure you give it a darn good cleaning before you attempt to use it for soldering again. That was surprisingly okay, didn't need any specialist tools. I just cleaned up the edges and got rid of most of the glue. If you're doing it, get rid of all the glue. I'm not as fussy as most people, though, so that's fine. I'm just going to go straight for it and tape it in. So it's got the old 3M. Now I will say that the top edge is very close to the edge of the shell, so you can see it's very thin here. So I don't know if you're going to get any light bleed. You might want to put some black tape or something like that behind the screen on that top edge. Let's try to fit it as it is and then review that scenario. There, that's okay. You can see there it's really tight there. But I don't know, it's probably okay. So we should be in a position to power it up. So I have got the batteries in, but I haven't turned it on. So the screen would fold down like that, so it has to connect to this ribbon this way. Just trying to make sure it's all the way in. Oh. <laughs> it's probably possibly easier to do it this way. You can see I've put a cartridge in there already. That's to more or less just locate the board in because it's not screwed down. Because, because of course you have to screw it to this front panel. But I figure it's worth getting a test before we start screwing things together. Ah, speaker wire. That might be a challenge. just about get the speaker wire in. And the reason I'm connecting that is if we don't get anything working on the screen at least we'll get some indication that something's happening. So there's the cartridge in. Right, let's try the old power switch in three, two, one. Oh, <laughs> bit of power, just a sec, one moment, <laughs> no, uh oh, yeah, we're getting something, I'm kind of hesitant to, to leave it on for very long as we're blowing something up, I'm not going to lie, I kind of gave up on testing it, so I've just basically put it all back in the box, put the cartridge in. I've not even screwed it. Let's just see what happens. Whoa, look at that. That is a, that is amazing. Oh, I'm hoping the buttons work. Let's just check. Shoot, shoot, left, right, up, down. Yeah. Holy smokes, look at that screen, look at that. That is insane. To the victor, the spoils. <laughs> oh, it's so blemish free for now. 